ND filters can be really, really confusing. There's different sizes, there's different stops of darkness, there's variable ND filters. What does this all even mean? Well, if you're a beginner just getting started, then I'm gonna break it down in this video. You gotta just press record. Hey guys, my name is Normal with Think Media, and today we're gonna be talking about ND filters and breaking it down very, very simple for you. Now, ND filter just simply stands for neutral density filter. Now, this type of a filter goes over your lens on your camera and really all it does is just make your image darker. It reduces the light that is going into the camera and hitting your sensor giving you a darker image. Now, why would you ever want a darker image? Well, if you're in photography, you can take long exposures outside in the daylight, and you can't really do this without having an ND filter on. Now, if you're a video shooter like me, you're definitely gonna wanna pick up an ND filter if you shoot video outside at all, and here's why. When you're outside and you're shooting video, your ISO is always gonna be at the lowest amount possible. You don't wanna increase the brightness when it's already super bright. So your ISO might be at, say, 100, and then your shutter speed wants to be double your frame rate. I typically shoot 24 frames per second, so my shutter speed is at 1 50th per second. Now, in order to get correct exposure, I need to increase my aperture to like f16 or f20, and this leaves me with not a really cool or cinematic looking shot. Everything's in focus, and I'm not getting that blurry background. But if you have an ND filter, you can reduce the light coming into the camera and then you can stop down to f1.8 or f2, 2.8, whatever kind of lens you have, and this is what's going to be able to give you that blurry background outside in those bright sunlight conditions. Now, when you're looking to shop for an ND filter, there's basically two different kinds when it comes to these budget ND filters that screw on to the lens. One would be a hard stop ND filter, and the other would be a variable ND filter. A hard stop ND filter is going to have one darkness. So you're gonna screw that onto your lens, and it's going to reduce the amount of light by maybe one stop, three stops, five stops, seven stops, you know, however many stops you want it to, you can buy that specific filter for your camera. Now the tricky thing is you can't change the darkness of that ND filter. It's going to be one darkness on that filter. Now usually people pick those up because they have a little bit better quality than something like a variable ND or as people call them a VND and the variable ND filters is definitely what I recommend because they're so convenient. Unlike the hard stop NDs you can throw one of these variable ND filters onto your lens and actually twist it to get your desired darkness in that ND filter and that's why I love this kind of a filter rather than having to take it off and put on a dark one or put on a lighter one with the variable ND filters you can just twist and turn and set your exposure and you have all your stops in one or sometimes two in a pack of two but you have all your stops that you would need in these one or two filters if you're shooting YouTube videos or vlogs anything where you just kind of want to be quick and get right to it, I definitely recommend this type of an ND filter again because it's so convenient and depending on the filter you buy you're still gonna get a really good quality inside this filter and we have our recommended filters in the description below now I'm gonna explain what to look for in your variable ND filter so that you get the right one and you don't spend a bunch of money on something that isn't gonna work for your needs. But first, like this video and comment down below and let me know what kind of videos do you shoot on your YouTube channel. Now, when shopping for a variable ND filter, it's gonna come in different strengths. So, for example, you might have something from three stops of darkness all the way up to nine stops of darkness. Now, the higher the number gets, the darker the ND filter is. And so that's good, you know, three to nine, you might have one that's one to seven. Uh, the Peter Canon Polar Pro, which is a bit of an expensive ND filter, that actually comes in two sets. So they split it up where it goes one to six, I believe, and then seven to nine. And typically, if you can get your ND stops in one filter, then especially for YouTube, I definitely recommend that. And you're gonna be saving yourself a bit of money as well. However, if you do wanna spend a little bit of extra money and get a nice ND filter kit that has the two sets, you do get some better quality. And I definitely recommend picking up the free 
Well Variable ND Kit. It comes in two sets. So you have that one to six, the seven to nine. That's also gonna be in the link in the description. That's gonna be a little bit more pricey, but you're gonna get really, really good quality out of those ND filters. Now, something else you might notice when shopping around is that some of these filters in the description, you know, on Amazon are going to say something like ND8 to ND128. And it gets really confusing because a lot of different ND filters use different numbers. Sometimes it's ND 0.3, sometimes it's ND 2. So I'm gonna break this down, and if it's really confusing, just stay with me. I'm gonna explain this for you so that you can understand it. Now basically the common theme between all these filters on Amazon is you wanna know how many stops of light does it block from coming into your camera. If you see something that says ND 2, that means it is one stop darkened. Now, if you see something that says ND 0.3, that is also going to be one stop darkened. And I don't really get why they do this, but uh, there's different ND filters that go by the 0.3 system or the ND2 system. And it's so confusing, but once you figure that out, it makes a lot more sense. So basically all you have to do is double that. If you go ND2 to ND4, that's gonna be two stops of light. ND8 would be three stops of light and so on. Back on that ND decimal system, if it's 0.3, that's one stop. If it's 0.6, that's gonna be two stops. 0.9, three stops, 1.2, four stops, and so on. Now, this is just confusing, but to break it down for you guys, when you're going to buy an ND filter, what you really need to know is you want to get an ND filter that can at least stop down seven stops of light. Because if you're outside and you want to get a shallow depth of field, something like 2.8, or lower, you're going to need seven stops. Ideally, if you can get an ND filter and pay for up to nine stops of ND filter, then that's fantastic. But for most of us who are shooting on crop sensor cameras and maybe don't have super fast, low aperture lenses, I definitely recommend getting a max of at least seven stops, which could look like ND 128, you know, when you're shopping on Amazon. But again, check the links in the description below. We're gonna have our recommended ND filter. So if you don't even wanna do the math and really figure it out, just click the link in the description and check out the one that we use at Think Media. If you're not sure what size of filter to get for your lens, click on the screen right now. I'm gonna break that down as well as tell you how to save some money using step up rings. See you guys in the next video.